For 30 years, Kitka has performed music rooted in Eastern European women's vocal traditions. The ensemble sings in a dozen different languages, mastering the demanding techniques of Balkan, Slavic, and Caucasian vocal styling. Kitka means bouquet in Bulgarian and Macedonian, and I think it's a great analogy, a great symbol for the group because um, the, the eight of us are all very different personalities with very different voices. I think Kitka really likes to sort of push and explore sort of the capacity of the human voice and you know its most subtle, gentle, lulling qualities to outright screaming. All of these sounds, even though they sound like contemporary experimental vocal techniques, are all rooted in these centuries-old folk traditions from Eastern Europe. Much of Kitka's repertoire is learned in the song catcher style, handed down in oral tradition from singer to singer. You're like that. <laughs> okay, try. Aha, good. Bulgarian soprano Svetanka Varimetsova is Kitka's current singer in residence. She's helping them perfect folk songs she's known since childhood. Just step. Try sing it, you know. Working with Svetanka in preparation for this International Women's Day concert, we drew songs from all over Bulgaria, from the various folklore regions, with a heavy dose of, of songs from her native region, uh, the, the area surrounding Pazarjik. And this is a region that has a very highly ornamented style of singing um, with a very sweet, strident, forward tone that Svetanka is really the quintessential um, maestra of this, of this style. From Bulgaria to Hungary, Macedonia to Russia, Kitka's repertoire is drawn from a wide swath of Eastern Europe. Rooted in both religious and secular traditions, over the years the songs have been sung in both grand cathedrals and humble dwellings. Eastern European women's ensemble singing uh, goes back centuries, and it really marks just sort of the everyday occurrences in village life. Songs would mark births of children, they would mark deaths, uh, funeral lamentations, christenings of babies, um, basically any marker of a life cycle. Often the native singers who have the most impact on Kitka's members are the ones with no professional training. Over the years, the group has made several trips to Eastern Europe. They've been deeply affected by their visits with rural villagers, including a pivotal trip to Ukraine in 2005. Going out into the countryside and visiting people in the villages and seeing how mm, kind of basic and earthy their lives are and, and how everything seems a little more honest in some way. I was totally surprised by how um, body and wacky and wild some of the people there were, particularly the older women. They, they were not so um, inhibited as you see older women in, in, you know, in our country being inhibited. And there was something about that honesty that translates itself to the music somehow. To, you know, meet the ladies who have been singing these songs and learn them from their mothers and their grandmothers and their aunties. It requires patience because they're never going to sing it the same way twice. <laughs> A lot of the older singers um, don't have many teeth left, so discerning the text can sometimes be challenging. <laughs> A lot of the music that we sing 
is music that is in danger of, of dying in, in some way or another. So when we go to these villages and, and meet these old women, it, it's a little bit um, heartbreaking sometimes because you think, oh, here are the last people singing this particular song that's only sung in this one village. Um, there may be variations in nearby villages, but, but this one rendition of the song is only sung here. In Ukraine, every spring, rituals are performed in honor of Rusalka Week, a celebration dating back hundreds of years. Rusalki are the spirits of young women who have died before their time, young women who have died in childbirth, women who take their own lives because they'd rather die than be married to someone that they don't love. They can be dangerous. Um, they're known to lure people, particularly men, um, to their doom. One of the ways they do that is by by tickling. Another way they do it is by luring people into kind of a mesmerized state through their songs and, and laughter. Intrigued by tales of the Rusalki, Kitka hired Ukrainian composer and performer Mariana Sadowska to introduce them to the few remaining grandmothers who remember the Rusalki songs and rituals. It's believed that during Rusalka week that um, the Rusalki rise from their middle world dwellings and wander among the living. And so the beginning of the week is marked by this procession to the cemetery and the ritual lamentations um, for lost loved ones. <laughs> There's a lot of um, appeasing that you have to do because you really don't want a Rusalka on your bad side because she can really wreak havoc with your family, with your fertility, with your crops, with your animals. So a lot of these of these songs are about, you know, appeasing her. There's amazing uh, variety of stories all over Eastern Europe about these Rusalka spirits. So we said, well, let's make a theater piece about them. There's so much great material. Inspired by what they heard in 2005, Kitka staged an ambitious theatrical production called The Rusalka Cycle. kind of a non-narrative sort of dreamscape journey. Uh, it doesn't really tell a linear story or, or a specific folk tale, but I would say the broad outline of the piece is that we start out kind of as normal women, and through a series of events, we become transformed into Rusalki. In all the time that I've been in Kitka, Rusalka cycle is the most challenging thing that we've ever done. Um, not just vocally, but also uh, because it involves um, a sort of stepping out for Kitka and, and acting and illustrating the music and not just standing and singing. It's been four years since Kitka premiered the Rusalka Cycle. Now they're back in rehearsals, adapting the show for an upcoming European tour. You don't need to understand all the languages to relate to those things that are really universal, that, that come through in the songs. And so I think Ultimately, you know, it's like using the voice to just get to connect people, to connect listeners, and um, you know, let the songs help you remember who you are. Yeah.